In this video, we'll be describing how we built our mobile chicken coop. We'll be going over the materials we used, the dimensions, and some automated features that we added. We hope this video can give you some ideas on how to build your own chicken coop. We wanted to build a chicken coop that was mobile, so that we could get our chickens on fresh grass and fresh bugs every day, and something that we could go on vacation for a few days and chickens would be fairly self-sufficient. I got a new toy, I mean tool, um, that we're going to be using for this project. It's a mobile table saw. So I'm excited to use this for the first time on this build. We'll see how it works. Ryan just finished cutting out the boards for the base of the frame. The dimensions are 4 by 10 and this yep. is pressure treated lumber that we had left over from our house build. Now I have the vertical pieces on. These are 4 foot high and they're 2 by 2s. Next I'll be building the platform that the chicken house will rest on. This platform is 18 inches off the ground and it's a 4x4 four four square. I'm just using thin plywood for the base of this. We'll see how that holds up over time. So here I'm just adding the horizontal supports and building out the rest of the coop. I chose to do 2 inch by 2 inch pieces for all of this. Everything except that the bottom platform which was 2x4. Definitely try to make decisions along the way to limit weight. The coop got heavy near the end so I'm definitely glad I try to reduce weight as much as possible. And we have five chickens, so this chicken coop is a good size for them. We could probably add a few more chickens and be fine. You can obviously scale this chicken coop up or down for your own needs. Okay, it's the next day. We're back on this chicken coop build. Made some progress here. Got a door put on. Finished up the roof. Well, at least the rafters for the roof. Plan for that is to put some plywood and then some shingles on that. We are ready to do some staining. I'm going to stain the chicken coop, then we're going to come back in and do the plywood and siding. We're using an outdoor stain that we got at Lowe's Cabin. It's just in the color black. These stains have tintable bases where you can pick any color that you want. Our theme is kind of to have it match our house with black and white as the color scheme. We are also going to be putting hardware cloth around this part of the chicken run. So staining it in advance before we do that will make it a lot easier and it'll also avoid getting stained all over the wire. I ended up working way into the evening, so the lighting kind of cut off on us here. Uh, it's the following weekend, getting back on this mobile chicken coop build. Kara's stained uh, a portion that's gonna be exposed. So I just need to close in this portion. So first I'm just gonna add the plywood to the sides and the roof. I'm just using the same thin plywood I used for the base there. I believe it's just five millimeter in thickness and again that's to conserve some weight. Here I have to finish off the nesting boxes. Um, I'm going to build four compartments to have four different nesting boxes in this area. Then I also need to build a top and latch for that. In the back here I'm going to be adding PVC pipe for the water and the feeder and I need to add some cross supports to support that with some metal straps. So that's the plan. We'll get after it here, see how far we get today. So now I'm just taking some measurements to get ready to cut out some plywood to cover the chicken coop. I have those dimensions marked out in the plywood and then I'm just cutting it with a skill saw and then just placing and attaching the plywood to the chicken coop with some screws. I'm using inch and a quarter lathe screws. These screws work really well for holding the thin plywood to the chicken coop. I think any normal wood screw would have a hard time holding the thin plywood. Well, I made some progress on the chicken coop. Um, it's looking like it's gonna be raining here shortly, so I'm gonna clean up my tools, wrap it up for the day, but I'll show you what I got going on. And like some of these other projects, I was able to utilize a lot of materials we have left over from our house build. So all of this lumber here was two by 12s, pressure treated two by 12s. I've ripped them down with a table saw. I had to buy the plywood. And then the siding and the shingles that I'll be putting on are left over from our house, so. This will look like a mini version of our house, right? So I have all the plywood on the sides. I have the nesting boxes built. Uh, we just made these about 12 inches wide by 12 inches deep. And we have four of them there. So I have a, a lid to build for that. And then the two big doors for the front here. I need to build, need to get the roof on obviously. And then the small door to open up into the run. I need to build that and mount that. So I think my next step here is to get all the siding on. So I'm gonna do that, probably mount the doors and then do the roof last, just so I can work around a little better. All right, I got all the siding on, the chicken coop. So next I think I'm gonna do the roof. Uh, we're just gonna put shingles on the roof. And then I wanna come here and use some trim boards 
just to trim out the corners um, and hold these panels. Not probably the traditional way of doing siding. Uh, typically you have kind of a corner piece. I don't have any corner pieces. So I'm gonna try to just do it with uh, just trim boards. Now I'm just getting the shingles put on. We chose to do shingles just because that's what we have. And you definitely want to weigh your options here. Shingles are going to be a good bit heavier than a metal roof. If I was going to go out and purchase materials for my roof, I would probably go the metal roof route just because it's lighter. To trim out the chicken coop, I just used two inch PVC board. And again, I use a PVC board because that's what I had left over. You can obviously use any kind of trim board that you have. Adding the trim board definitely completed the look and it closed up any of those gaps that I had left over from my siding job. We're using hardware cloth for our chicken run. It's an easy trick just to use a piece of wood and hammer it to get that sharp 90 degree angle. I bent the wires at a 90 degree angle here and then around these support beams I just cut some out and then I'll also attach it there. We purchased our hardware cloth and big rolls from Lowe's so it is pretty bendy and it is a little hard to manhandle here but it's not too bad once you get it in those corners. We're just using these half inch wood staples to secure the wire. Unfortunately, I don't have a video showing putting the automatic feeder and water together. So I'll just describe it with this picture. On the left in the back there is the feeder. So what that is is a PVC pipe that sticks out the back of the chicken coop that we can access from the outside. And then that PVC pipe comes to the inside of the coop, bends at a 45 degree angle and goes down. And then with a T connection, creates two feeding troughs that the, chicken, that the chickens can access the feed in. Basically this serves as storage. That whole vertical column can hold the feed. And as the chickens peck at the feed, more and more drop just with gravity. On the right there is a water. Again, that, that pipe sticks out the back of the chicken coop and the pipe comes in, comes across, and then bends back. And this is just a combination of four inch PVC pipe and two inch. I spent some time in Lowe's trying to figure out exactly what connections I need and the angles I needed to get that all to work. Um, and it was a good bit of trial and error and a couple trips to Lowe's to make that happen. That'll be able to hold a good amount of water so that the chickens shouldn't run out of water anytime soon. And then in the lower portion of the pipe, I installed three chicken water nipples. Um, I chose to do three, four, or five chickens. That would definitely be sufficient to keep them all in water. And last, we have the wheel system. I fortunately don't have a video of this being put together, so I'll just talk about it with this image. The wheels are set up so that they're activated and lifting the coop when the coop is mobile, then they're not holding the coop up when it's stationary. So the way that works is the wheel is attached to a board with a bolt and nuts and washers, and then that wheel and board system is bolted to the chicken coop in such a way that it can pivot. So to activate the wheels, you lift up on the coop and push down on the board, and then swing the block around to hold the board in place. You can move the coop around, and then just do the reverse and then lower the coop. Thanks everyone for watching the video, I hope you found it informative and enjoyable. As always, remember to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can see additional content of ours coming out. And if you haven't seen our previous video from last week, make sure you check that out. That video was a comprehensive tour of the chicken coop and talked about some different pieces of it. I do plan to post an update video on how this chicken coop is working out and provide any updates to anything that we've changed. Again, this is Bluebird Homestead. My name's Ryan. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye y'all. Thank mm -hmm. you.